Hey everyone and welcome to lesson 13 and this is the final lesson of the actual tutorial series where we will be making this website live. This website right here is actually running uh, on a live host, a uh, live server at this very moment. I've already got it all uploaded and I've been adding my videos to it. As you can see I'm only up to lesson 9 here but I have videos recorded all the way through lesson 13 which is what I'm recording right now and I will be posting these on this site as well. I will also be posting them on learnnerd.com, which is right here. And I haven't got them posted yet on here, but this is where I want you guys to go if you want to make any comments. Uh, it'll be an easy place for all of us to check and keep our comments uh, organized, and I can help you with any problems you're having or answer any questions you might have, as well as just take general feedback on improvements I could make. Uh, I really appreciate you guys watching it all the way up to this point. I know I've said the word um a lot. You probably heard it more than you've ever wanted to hear. Uh, it's just something I do when I'm thinking. Unfortunately, it's a habit I need to break badly. And uh, I hope my rambling was also instructional as well. After these, after this video, I will be doing another, uh, at least two bonus videos. I'll be doing an HTML one for sure, and I'll be doing a CSS one. If I can get into a jQuery one, I will do that as well. We've already kind of hit on the basics of jQuery. Uh, probably as extensive as you'd want to get for this. You'll want a tutorial series based on just jQuery if you want to get more extensive. And uh, if there's anything else I can find, I'll try to throw in as many videos as I can. I just want to provide you guys with a lot of resources that you could use uh, to build your own websites down the line because obviously this isn't a perfect fit for a website for everyone, but I wanted to demonstrate lots of concepts that would basically apply to lots of other websites. So hopefully you've taken some things from this that you can apply to your own projects to a certain extent at least. Uh, but to get this site live, we're going to need to make a few changes. Uh, first and foremost, you'll need to sign up for a host. There's a couple hosts that I can think of that I've had that uh, I've been happy with. One was justhost.com, and this is this website. It's rather affordable. Uh, it only costs, I think I pay 50 bucks a year. Um, so it's, it's pretty affordable and you have unlimited everything. If you read the fine print, none of this stuff is ever really unlimited no matter what host you get. But they give you more space than you'll probably need. Uh, they're pretty, they work with you pretty well. They do have some things that are limited such as access to uh, CNAME attributes on your server which are some more advanced level things. But if you email them, they can take care of some of the issues you're having which for some people they'd probably rather have it handled like that. I've always had good customer support with them. Uh, another host that I've had would be HostGator.com, and this is a really popular one. It's probably more popular than just Host, and I had a good experience with them as well. I uh, didn't have any problems, and if you have another host that you like better, be sure to list it. Uh, I'm always always all ears when it comes to hosts. They all do a pretty good job, but they can all do better. So if you know of one that you think is just fantastic, please let me know. But here's just a couple of options you might have that are pretty affordable if you're looking for a host and don't have one already. And basically, uh, when you sign up for your host, they will give you a username and a login, and you'll use that to log into your account. Uh, usually you can go to yourwebsite.com slash cpanel, or uh, if there's nothing on there yet, usually the host page will have a login button for you. And once you log in, there is usually some kind of control panel that will allow you to get to PHP My Admin. And once you get there, you'll need to set up the same host that we have on our local host, or the same database, I guess, that we have on our local host. And I highly recommend that you keep it the same name that you've been working with, and you plan to work on with the same tables. Otherwise, uh, basically all these record sets and everything we've done are going to be kind of arbitrary because it's going to be pulling different information in. It won't connect properly. You'll run into issues. But if you're confident in going in and changing all that information, then by all means, uh, feel free to change that information as much as you want. So I know this is on my local host, but just pretend that this is on my actual host. I'm not going to log in to my actual host just because of uh, security reasons and confidentiality. But uh, PHP My Admin does look identical to this, even when it's running on the web. So the first thing you want to do is create a new database, and you'll want to name it, like I said, the same thing that you've named it previously. So in our case, it'd be SSVlog. And you just type it in, hit create, and then from there, you'll come back to your local host. So you come back to this page, and you navigate to your SSVlog, and then you can actually export 
all the information that you've saved. So if you have tons of information in your blog that's actual, actually relevant to your website and you want to save all that, you don't want to have to recreate it, and same goes for admin, then you could come here and you could click export and you can choose compression type, none, or zipped. A lot of times I do a zipped file or none, it really doesn't matter because when you import it, almost all servers support uh, compression type being detected. So it should detect automatically if it's compressed or if it's not, and it should work appropriately. So under export, just click go basically, and it will pull all the information out of this blog, and it will create a file wherever you chose to save it, and it's usually called like a db.mysql or db.zip, and it's a zipped file. Then when you go to your host, you can import that information without having to type it all back in again. So that's a real time saver. Uh, if you don't have any information in it, or if you want to create your own, you can even clear the information out of these and still export it and it'll keep you from having to create all these tables. It will create the tables for you automatically. So that's another handy feature of importing and exporting uh, to save you some setup time on your live server. Since you've already done it once, why do it again, right? So now that you've done that, now you're ready to transfer your site. So you want to download this program called FileZilla. It's absolutely free. I'll create a link, create or I'll put a link for you in the important lesson links. Uh, there's a bunch of different FTP programs. This is just one of them. I like it. You can even set up FTP within Dreamweaver if you wanted to. I kind of think it gets, I don't know. I don't think it does a, uh, as quick a job as a dedicated FTP transfer client does. So I downloaded FileZilla. And so once you've downloaded that, you can go ahead and open it up. We'll come back to that in a second. Uh, first thing you want to do is you want to go to Files, and you want to go to SS Blog. And well, actually, first thing that I like to do is navigate to your folder where you keep all of your files. So here's SS Blog. This is where we kept all of our files for local testing, and I like to duplicate it. So you can just click duplicate, and then I typically like to name one of them. Um, SS vlog for the live site and then I would name the other one like localhost SS vlog so I can tell the difference like this one is for my local server and this other one that I just created will be for the live site so after you've done that come in here and uh, come find in your files the <coughs> live site version and navigate to well the first thing you want is in the Site directory, come down to connections and open dbcon. And I actually have that open already. And um, for sites like Just Host and Gator Host, or Host Gator, you'll be able to leave localhost the same. But under the database that you want to connect to, you'll have to use your username underscore name of your database. That's just the way they do it. So they find the username and then they find the database associated with that. Um, and then username will actually just be your username and password will just be your password for your server. And you'll need to make sure that you have a MySQL user created on your host. If you don't, they have tutorials for doing that. A lot of times they create a master user, which is your username and your password for the website or for your host. Uh, but you can create other users if you want someone else to be able to access this as well. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. And I will actually put some comments here. Let's do localhost because that's what you can fill in. If your hosting provider happens to be different, database, uh, then let me know. I'll see if I can find something out because I know not all are the same, but in my experience, this is how the majority of uh, hosting providers offer connections to databases. Username. And we'll actually, I'll put host username. Post password. Okay, and then the other file that we need to get to is files under login here, and then under classes, mysql.php, and I've already opened that as well. And now here, we have to change the same information. Uh, you could use the under memberships basically, right here, you could require uh, a connection to dbcon and you can do the same under the login.php I wanted to show you what it looks like when it's handwritten and there is some functionality here for verifying passwords so I wouldn't change it if I were you but 
uh, this is basically a handwritten connection versus a connection built by Dreamweaver. You can kind of see the difference, but since I've done this, we have to change it twice. If you're really building a website that you're really serious about, I would only do one connection file, so you only have to change it in one place. Uh, just some advice there. But localhost can stay the same. You'll change this to your username. This will be your password. And this will be username underscore database and save that and that's really all there is to it now just come to FileZilla and locate SS blog here and you'll have to oh we have to connect to our server we haven't connected to our server yet and I won't be connecting to a server but I'll show you how it's done you can use the quick connect bar and under host it's going to typically be FTP dot my website dot com and the username will be your username for your hosting provider and your password will be your password for your hosting provider uh, port you can leave blank click quick net and connect and if your credentials are correct it should connect you no problem you'll want to navigate to public underscore html or some have a directory called www navigate to the root directory basically of your website though and drag this folder in. So if I were to drag this in just like this SS blog, it would create a website scottsiemens.com slash SS blog. And there it is. If you wanted to put this on the root of your website, so all I had to type in was scottsiemens.com, obviously I have a website on mine, but if you wanted to create your own, um, get back to Firezilla here, then you would open this folder up, and within the same root directory, you would just copy, shift, I use shift, click at the bottom, copy all of these, or highlight all of these, and just drag the whole bunch in there. And this index.php file will run with whatever folder it's in, and if it's in the root directory, yeah, yourwebsite.com will be the root folder. So that's if you want to put it on your root directory. Uh, if you plan on connecting all the time within FileZilla, you can go to File, Site Manager, you can do a new site, you can name it whatever you want, My Site, Host, same thing, ftp.mywebsite.com, port number, leave it blank, login type, choose normal, username would be your host username, and your password would just be your host password. Click Connect, I'm actually going to delete this because I don't need it. But that's how you connect and that's how you upload your website. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching the whole tutorial series. I know you stuck through me saying the word um a whole lot and uh, a lot of copying and pasting. And um, I just really appreciate you guys watching all the videos. Uh, if you didn't, I hope maybe there were a few videos that you could have watched that were useful to you. I will be posting a couple bonus videos on HTML and CSS like I mentioned. So hopefully those are some use to you. If you have any questions at all, please head on over to learnnerd.com and I would be happy to discuss any questions, comments, problems, whatever you're having. I'd love to discuss it with you. You can post all that information on here. And I hope you guys enjoyed doing this tutorial series as much as I did you know, filming all of it and building the website. It's something I love doing and so I really get into it. It's just, it's a part of what I do. And, uh, like I said, if you have any ideas on how to change the website or make the website better, please go for it. Send me revisions that you make if you'd like. I'd like to look over them. And uh, this site is yours to use. If you want to build your own website, modify it, give it to a friend, um, you're welcome to distribute it as much as you want. Please don't charge anyone for it. I want it to be free. And uh, enjoy it. Thanks, guys.